Hello there, my name is Ismos, and uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, top 10 modifiers I should be adding to your workflow. Uh, the first uh, modifier we're going to be looking at is the bevel modifier, and uh, this rounds off uh, your uh, meshes so that they have smooth uh, uh, edges, uh, because you never really see such sharp edges in the real life. So when you add um, a modifier like the bevel modifier, it rounds off the corners like this to make your uh, objects look more realistic. And uh, you can play around with the resolution here, uh, the number of segments here, uh, to get a more softer kind of transition from the edge to that sharp angle, from the sharp angle to a more smooth uh, edge like that. Combined with that shade smooth, uh, it makes even your, uh, your objects look better and more realistic. You can also turn on hard normals and uh, also uh, when you turn on hard normals, make sure you under the object data settings, uh, you have auto smooth uh, turned on so that you maintain uh, that sharpness in the shading uh, but uh, also uh, retain uh, the smooth corners like that. Uh, let's go to, uh, the, to the second modifier, uh, which is uh, number two in our list, uh, the screw modifier. So say you want to make a spring object like this or anything of this sort, you can use the screw modifier uh, as you can see here. Uh, you just create uh, something like a curve object and uh, add uh, the screw modifier. Let's find that, screw, 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 screw modifier and uh, just play around with the angle of axis, the axis angle or axis and uh, make sure that uh, we move at uh, the object go to edit mode select all the vertices and move them away uh, from the pivot point so my pivot point is that uh, uh, orange object there and see what happens uh, you can also try rotating the selection by 90 degrees on different axes to see what you can get and uh, then you can play around with the screw uh, to see uh, with the screw option here and see uh, what you are getting. So you can see, let's reduce this a bit, something like that. Uh, you can also ch just try different angles until you get what you're looking for. And uh, after you get something like this, you can use the iterations to increase uh, the length of uh, whatever you're creating. Uh, so that's uh, the screw modifier. You can play around with it. I, I made a detailed tutorial on how to do that. You can cite that uh, in the uh, in the search results or in my videos, and you should see that. Uh, the third modifier we're going to be looking at is the uh, skin modifier. Uh, usually, the skin modifier is used to animate uh, characters uh, using the bone using bones. Uh, yeah, using bonds and amateurs. Uh, but uh, you can also use it to do other cool things, uh, like make a grid uh, of this sort. So uh, this is just a simple plane, nothing fancy about it. But uh, we can turn each edge here into its own kind of tube uh, by adding a skin modifier. And that's all you have to do. Let me just show it to you here. Add a plane, make as many subdivisions as you want, and then add a skin modifier. You can see what we get. But by default, uh, the size of the tubes is a bit too big so you just have to go to edit mode and uh, make sure you select everything and use the shortcut ctrl a uh, to scale those down just a bit uh, to the size you want to and uh, the cool thing about this is that uh, you can also come in here and uh, select say two edges like this this vertex and this and hit j to connect them and you should have something like this so you can create a, a very interesting pattern so if i did let me first turn off the skin modifier so that i can see uh the pattern i'm creating so i can join, join this here maybe this here and uh, this i'm trying to create an s uh, like superman uh, let me maybe extrude this a bit further and you can see how the pattern is coming together so that's how you can use and i imagine if you're creating say a sci-fi uh a sci-fi a sci-fi scene you can use this in your scene and maybe you can also just duplicate this uh, just to be uh, remove the skin modifier you can see what you're getting or just insert this double insert and extrude this just a bit you can see uh, the kind of pattern uh, we are creating and uh, if i s scale this by the origin all the faces by their origin you can kind of add can create a more sci-fi sci looking asset or object and uh, combined with the bevel modifier, you can see how we can make this even look 
为 cooler. And if I turn on uh, the cavity, cavity, you can see how this starts looking really cool. Uh, so that's the skin modifier. Uh, the next modifier we can look at is the, let me make sure this is recording. Yes, it is. Uh, the next modifier is a very simple modifier. It's uh, again, it's called a uh, simple modifier. So if you have an object like this uh, with uh, some good subdivisions, because uh, it's, it bends the geometry, uh, meaning it will need uh, some geometry to work with. Uh, so that's why my cube is a bit subdivided like this. You can go to the, sim to the modifiers and add a simple, a simple default modifier. Uh, you have a few options here. You have the twists. And remember, these are all animated. It can, can be animated. So if you hit I on, the, on this angle property, I have set a keyframe there. And I can also set a keyframe another, at another frame, uh, changing uh, the value it I. You can see now I have uh, that animation. I uh, have the bend. We have temper. We have stretch. So that's a very simple and basic uh, uh, modifier for you uh, that you can add into your workflow. Another modifier we're going to be looking at is the surface deform uh, modifier. Uh, this is very useful. So you see we have these cubes and uh, if we wanted to bend them in a different way, you can just Use the surface deformer to, de to edit uh, an object like a plane here, and uh, that transformation, uh, those changes can be uh, translated uh, to, cube to another object uh, like this uh, that we have. So you see, I'm just editing this here, but all the changes are being translated uh, to the object I have. And uh, the more interest, the most interesting thing about this is that uh, I can even add other modifiers to this bend object, uh, to this object here, uh, that I'm using to bend. Uh, say, I can add, let's see, let's see, what can I add? Let me use the simple deform that we have looked at before, and uh, you can see it will, uh, the changes will be translated to that object. And uh, another cool thing is that, uh, say I added, I used, instead of using just uh, a simple deform modifier like that, I used a cloth simulation, uh, so something like this. Let me go back to the first frame and add maybe an object for this to collide with. And just make sure if I set up my physics cloth with this, just give this a collision. And if I simulate this, I need to make sure that uh, this is great. Ah, let me see, let me get this. Uh, so the, the thing about these, this uh, modifier is that uh, if you add more vertices uh, that, you ha that you didn't have before, uh, it will break uh, the modifier. That's why you see it's not uh, working right now because remember, uh, before I added the cloth modifier, I subdivided this a bit to have more resolution. So you would have to come back and uh, unbind, bind, and let me just show you the, all the steps that are required. So you just create a, a plane like this and I have uh, a mesh like this. So what I used to do this, to create these cubes, I just uh, used the array system, array modifier and uh, applied that uh, to have uh, these cubes lined up like this. And uh, then I added a bind, uh, sorry, a, simple, a surface deform modifier, selected uh, this object. And uh, the distance, the proximity of these objects is also considered when applying this modifier. So make sure that uh, they are very near to each other and then hit bind. And then now if I place play, you can see how this works. Uh, the translation, the, the deformation of uh, the cloth is also being translated uh, to the objects we have here. And uh, what I was saying is that uh, if say, you can see this is working very easily, working correctly right now, but uh, if I subdivided this like I did before, it will break uh, the modifier and I, what you have to do then, you have to unbind and then bind again uh, for this to work correctly. Uh, the next modifier is the array modifier. It looks very simple and uh, not uh, that interesting, but uh, if you combine it with say, if you combine it with say uh, an object, an empty like this, you can make you can see I've, I have the empty inside here, inside there, but uh, you can make some cool animations with that. You can maybe use this as a tentacle 
uh, for your animation so you can see how and uh, basically what I did here is just I just used an array I just applied an array modifier increase the count just give that a bit of space and uh, instead of using uh, the relative offset I just used the object offset so the object I was using is the uh, is the empty and uh, if you select that and check this object X offset whenever you move this it affects uh, the array and uh, when you rotate it you can get some cool things going on here uh, even scaling it you can see how it gives you really cool animations so another modifier we're going to be looking at here is uh, uh, the hook modifier and uh, the way this works is that uh, say you have an object like this uh, most of the time let me make sure this is yes uh, so most of the time you can't edit an object uh, without going into edit into the, into edit mode but sometimes you want to uh, move vertices around uh, without going into edit mode uh, so you can use a hook uh, to make to move different vertices uh, selected vertices in uh, any direction so you can see I just select this hook and I move a bunch of vertices uh, say I wanted to uh, move just this vertex uh, I can outside outside edit mode I'll just select that vertex use the shortcut ctrl H to add a new hook and now you can see it has been added in the modifiers and now I can select this hook and uh, move uh, that vertex uh, if you want to, uh, to move a bunch of vertices uh, like what I have here uh, what you would have to do is uh, select a bunch of them and then hit ctrl H to add uh, the hook like that and I can move them like that uh, if you want you can then add or add a fall off to those vertices I just need to reduce the fall off and try 0.05 And see how uh, that works. Uh, another modifier is uh, the wave modifier. You can see, let me first hide everything else. Actually, that doesn't really do much. Alt H just gives you cool animation, so uh, you can find that under modifiers, wave. Actually, not, not that, uh, under wave. You can see, you can also try turning off some of the keyframe, some of the motion axis and uh, you should get some good uh, results like that uh, then the next modifier uh, is where is my okay uh, is the explode modifier uh, this works in com in combination with uh, the particle system so you need to have to set up a particle system first and uh, uh, what it does it uh, breaks down uh, your mesh into and attach them to different particles so whenever you see a particle emitted uh, a face will go with that uh, particle and uh, it will kind of create a dissolving effect and uh, uh, if you have watched the Avengers Infinity uh, sorry Avengers uh, Infinity War you should remember how you should uh, recognize uh, an effect like this uh, where Thanos kind of disappears and what uh, yeah so you can try doing this kind of effect I don't remember the there is another blender awesome tutorial guy who did a, a, a ghost in shell I, I really don't remember the name but uh, sorry for that but uh, i did a cool animation uh, using this effect so you can try searching ghost ghost in a shell blender effect uh, you, you uh, a very nice tutorial should come up so um he really explains uh, this very well in doing that so another modifier you're going to be looking at is the displacement modifier so if you want to create a terrain uh, like say this one here and you don't want to sculpt uh, it directly in blender you can search for terrain maps in uh, in google from google and uh, find an image you say like this or any of these i uh, drop it in blender and uh, add a displacement modifier a displacement modifier uh, make sure you, that your sub your mesh is a bit subdivided and uh, then in the displacement modifier add a new texture and uh, select uh, the image you added let me find a different image here so let's say 
let's say this river here it has some nice tributes so let me save that you just drag and drop it directly into your blend file and then find it in your images you can see we have that we're using that as a bump map and uh, the scale right now is a bit off so i can go to the uh, uh, modifiers here and reduce uh, the strength just a bit and you can see we have that again let me first delete all these modifiers so that i reduce I kind of free up some cpu so that i can subdivide this even further uh, remember the more you subdivide uh, the more details you get uh, you can see actually i think i'm using a different let me see am i using this actually i'm using another image instead of this here so that's fine i think it's this here you can see how that looks and you can switch between different terrains quite easily so yeah uh, thanks for watching i'll see you in the next tutorial